What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Another episode on the T5 today. Carrying on with the build series. Engine's been out, engine's back in. Hopefully you've seen that video. PD-130 swap, all is running good. There is a handful of little jobs that need doing. The alternator, pulley, uh, tensioner is flapping around. The tensioner's good, it's always the alternator pulley. They're a clutch pulley, so if your belt's flapping, it's more than likely the clutch pulley has uh, seized up. We've got a new one. We've fitted the PD-130 turbo, so it's the bigger turbo, and the downpipe flange is different. We've got a new flange. We need to get the downpipe off, cut that up, weld the new one on. That will quieten it down, because while running, we have got the downpipe off. And we've also got a sliding door. It's dropped, and the bottom roller's completely collapsed. We've got a new one. Let's get straight into it. Let's have a butcher's. Ah, yeah. First couple of bits I just want to walk through, and dipstick tube. If you remember in the last video, the dipstick was almost touching the radiator fan, and what I'd done in the end, I got a strategically sized screwdriver, sat on this water pipe, it was about six inches long, uh, wedged it in there, like so, heated it up with a heat gun, very carefully not to burn it, left it overnight, come in the next day, and uh, yeah, it's perfect. Absolutely solid, works as it should. Fix that one, happy days. Secondly, the boost pipe. If you remember in the last video, the boost pipe was touching the bulkhead, and it wasn't right, and that's because the orientation of the turbo housing is then sat at a different angle. So, I clocked the turbo, and when I say clocked the turbo, I mean I undone the eight mil bolts, and I turned it, anti-clockwise closer to the engine. That pulled it away from the bulkhead. Because I clocked the turbo housing, that then put the boost hose on twisted. So we've had to cut it so then we could spin it round, I don't know, 20, 30 degrees. I then got some 40 mil stainless pipe and then I could jubilee clip it and space it out a little bit because it was close to hitting this intake pipe here. We can see it coming along here. And then this pipe down here, that was also squinched up. That was like a long ear. So this is the original T5 hard pipe. And what I'd done was hard pipe off and I did cut some of it out. I'd done it in two stages because I didn't want to cut it short. Cut about three inches out in total, a little bit of the bend, held it up in place, perfect length, got it welded by a TIG welder just down the end of my estate. Happy days, nice one, Jeb. And, uh, and then yeah, because it looked a little bit tacky in silver. It's black, looks better in satin black, looks a bit more factory, and now we haven't got squished up boost hoses. So that is dipstick tube resolved and top boost pipe resolved. And look, if that boost pipe ever splits, I can just order another T5 one, cut it, put that little joiner in it, done. Happy days, nice and easy. Next, we're gonna move on to the downpipe flange. I wanna get this on. Because we've fitted the other turbo, the original turbo had a clamp that clamped around it. The bigger turbo's got the free bolt flange. I've ordered a flange, it's turned up, so I need to take the downpipe off, cut the flange bit, the clamp bit, off the one on there now, and uh, weld this on. But unfortunately, you need to offer it up, tack weld it, take it off, weld it fully. That way, it's all in the right place. Then we've got the clutch pulley, and as I mentioned, these are, can we see? My fingers hold in the center. So they spin one way and then they lock up the other way. And now over time, these seize up and they're locked both ways. That makes the belt flap. The alternator still works, but it makes the belt flap. We've got a new one of them and hopefully I can get to it via a little strategic hole down here. It doesn't look too accessible at the minute. So we've probably got to take this boost pipe off, intake pipe off, get in there with an impact gun, take the belt off, and that saves me having to pull the whole front end off and uh, to get the alternator off. I should be able to do it, we're gonna find out. Now lastly, sliding door, nice and easy job. The door's stiff to open and close. This is completely collapsed. We'll get that on there, and that is a couple more little jobs done on the T5. So, because it doesn't fit on my ramp, I am laid on the floor. Let's have a little look. To get the downpipe off, where's the button on the torch? We need to get this clamp off. 
the bolts are completely rusted. I need to get under here with a grinder, loads of metal, loads of sparks in my eyes. Cut this off. Two bolts, two bolts. Yeah, there's two bolts that hold the downpipe to the subframe. Undo those, get the downpipe out, and let's have a look. Oh, so I bought my first ramp maybe 10 years ago. And after I bought my first ramp, I said, I am never going back to working on the floor. <sighs> Jacked up, I'm laying on the floor on a piece of cold cardboard. At least it's cardboard, not cold concrete. I cut the flange off, that was easy. Um, the last two bolts, I believe, and this has got a cat on it. Um, but we want free flowing exhaust, so I might snip on that and open it up. Let's just put it that way anyway. Yeah, down pipes off, sleeve is off. As I say, unfortunately, I've got to cut the flange off, bolt the flange to the back of the turbo, then shimmy under here with a welder, and fit it all, tack it in place, take it all back off again, and weld it. You gotta make sure it sits right. Anyway, go. Oh, I'm out. Oh shit. Uh. So we got the downpipe off and the cat. Nice and easy. And uh, here we go. So there's the flange, and just quickly, if you start just welding a thick bead right around the outside, you're not going to get these two 30mm nuts on. This one's all right this end. So, this inner part is what I'm going to weld to. This is the outer clamping sleeve on the original turbo. There is a weld here, so I'm going to cut round the outside of the grinder, slide that piece off, that then goes over that centre piece, and what I'm going to do, I'm going to offer it up in place and tack it on the outside, and then take it off, and I'll weld all around the inside and then I'll belt sand it smooth and then we've got no thick slug causing hard access to get these 13mm nuts on. Let me cut this off and see how it looks. So I have carefully slivered through the end. Now that comes off, we haven't cut through two skins, we've cut through one skin. I've carefully, with a die grinder and a belt sander, I've ever so slightly beveled this edge, like triangle shape. I then also beveled the inside edge to this. And reason being, when I'm upside down, can't see nothing welding, tacking into place, I want that to fall into central. Rather than getting out and it's off center, now that fedonk falls into center, tack it in place underneath the motor, then get out and weld it on the ends inside. I did clean all the inside up, ready for, uh, ready for welding. I've cleaned the outer layer of this mild steel because this black stuff, weld doesn't penetrate it too well. So we've just ground it off. We're only gonna do a couple of tacks on the outside, weld it fully on the inside. Downpipe has been on and off twice. We tacked it in place three times, one, two, one around the other side. That was easy. Nope, but we got it done. And then when it's off for the last time, I did weld a nice polo right around the inside. I heat this thick plate up with a blowtorch first because when welding something thick to something thin you need both metals to heat up for it to penetrate nice. This is obviously thicker, it'll warm up slower. Heat it up with a blowtorch, welded a polo, nice. Happy with that, it's in the right place, it's spot on. While it was apart I had the grinder out. I did cut the cat open and I may, I may not have decatted it. Uh, just wanted to have a little look in there. <clears throat> But uh, yeah, all welded back together is nice. Need to fit it on the motor, and then we're gonna tackle this alternator pulley. But um, yeah, happy with that. Well anyway, apart from this, you can see the flexi. It isn't petered out. This is meant to live under there, but it's popped out. It isn't leaking, it's good condition in there. So we're just gonna leave that be for now. If it does go, I can cut it there, cut it at the bottom, weld a new flexi in, but it's not leaking. 
that isn't going anywhere it does offend my eye a little bit so i've got to put it back on but that is good enough for now um yeah happy days let's move on downpipes back on cool that is a fiddle that has taken me about two hours let's uh see how it sounds Have a listen from the back. Yeah, definitely wafts of smoke. Very nice. Another job off the list. Does sound free flowy. Now look, if you're not a big fan of decats and stuff like that, they're there for a reason. They protect the planet. But look, I don't think the polar ice caps are going to melt overnight and some polar bears are gonna like sweat in their boots just because of a couple of decats. Anyway, I might not have even done it. Exhaust is mint, happy with that. I need to shoot out. I have been building a shed in the missus garden. She's a pet lover. She's got horses, cats, dogs, birds, fish, guinea pigs, rabbits. She's got like every pet you could think. It's like a zoo around there. Anyway, putting a shed up in her garden, it was an eight foot by eight foot shed. I've cut it in half, made it an eight by four because she hasn't got the biggest garden. Then she wants to put the guinea pigs and the rabbits in the shed. So I've made them a little run. Check this out. Oh yeah, looks pretty sweet. I'd live there if I had to. Anyway, I'm out for a couple of hours. I'll be back. Minute for you. Three hours for me. Let's do it. We're back to the workshop. We've got happy pets, happy missus, happy dob tech. I want to get straight on with the alternator pulley. As we know, it's flapping. I'm just going to fire it up and let's have a little listen. Hopefully, you can hear the noise. Yeah, that's definitely flapping. Let's uh, turn it off and have a better look. We're all set up and ready to go. I've got the extension bar and the special socket in the end of the uh, alternator pulley. You get those special sockets on eBay. It says to use an Allen key down the middle of it, but I just get a buzz gun on it. Lefty loosey, righty tighty. We've pulled the cap off the end. It's exposed the nut. I say the nut, the pulley. I'm gonna get a buzz gun in there. I've got the belt off. Let's, uh, let's see if it undoes. Oh uh, yeah. And there's the old pulley. Cool, I can't turn that at all. Let me get the tool. I can't turn that at all. So what way does it go? Spins. Ah, that is seized. So that is the old one. Same as the new one, yes. Now, the thread is in this, so I can just spin it on. Right, I've spun that on. And to be honest, as soon as you start this, it tightens itself up. But, I don't want to be playing with it again, especially when there's loads of room. So I am just going to give it a, a couple of dagger daggers. At least I didn't have to strip the alternator off and attack more stuff. Oh yeah, I can feel it spinning. It will spin backwards, but it locks up when you rotate forwards. I'll fit all this back together, and we'll see what it sounded like. It flapped on idle, something like that. And it also chirped when you turn the steering. I'll put it back together, we find out. So, we're all back on. I did spot an issue. We've got no chirping when steering. Happy days. Can you hear the little rattling? Turns out the pulley's too small. So the tensioner is actually flapping on a piece of metal. <sighs> Need to order another, ten uh, another pulley that's the same size. Let's have a look. The pulley hiding in there is too small. So the tensioner is backed right out. 
Anyway, it doesn't flap, so that has solved the issue. Just need to get another pulley, enough a day. Anyway, let's get on with this sliding door. It is the following day, slightly deflated about the alternator pulley, and it was only like one or two mil too small, and it made all the difference. New pulley ordered, we ended last, it was about 10 o'clock, so we didn't finish too early. Anyway, sliding door. It is hard. Just quickly, it's the 2nd of June, UK weather, it is 13 degrees. I've got a t-shirt, a jumper and a hoodie on. What is going on? Sliding door, it is stiff. To close it, you have to lift it up. Anyway, it's the bottom roller. Now, these are so easy to fit. And if your door's stiff, just go round and have a look at them. There's one at the top, one at the bottom, and then there's one in the back. Um, nice and simple to change. I've got an M, M8 multi-spline. Let's do it real time so you can see how easy they are. But be careful, because when you undo a sliding door roller, the door can drop. So sometimes, especially the back roller, it'd be nice to have a pair of hands. But if you guys have seen the channel, you know I do things on me ones normally. So I'm just taking the weight of the door with my right hand. Cool, that wind is cold. Oh, see that? Well, anyway, there's the roller. Let's lift him back in before he drops off and ruins the world. I can't get the new roller in. Well, that was lucky I had my boost pack right behind me. And that's why I say it's nice to have someone to help you. On a transit, you can just shoehorn this in there. This ain't a transit, it's a T5. So right at the end, I'll advise taking this off before you undo the door hinge. Uh, we know that now. Again, two M8 bolts. I've given in there a bit of a blowout. The cleaner it is in there, the rolling surface, because all the weight of the door's on this, the cleaner in there, the smoother your door's gonna run. And that just slides in there nicely. Obviously, now we know. And try and line it up with your old marks. Hopefully when it was made, it was made pretty near to the specifications of the old one, or the original one. It's quite heavy, this door. Maybe get someone to help you. In fact, get someone to help you, because if you didn't know what you was doing, you might struggle a little, because I'm struggling, and I sort of know what I'm doing. And as I was saying, Try and line the marks up with the old ones, you know, the bolt head. You'll see where it was tightened up. Now this one has got elongated holes, front and back. And what that's for is bringing the door in and out. So when you shut it, if the door's hanging out too far, undo the bolt, slide it in, and vice versa. <laughs> And before, I had to lift the door to shut it. Oh, that's a bit nicer. Oh, that's really nice. Yeah, so I'm just hitting the outside of this locator, so it needs to go in ever so slightly. It's just sitting in, so I pushed it in too much. It needs to come out but you can spend a bit of time adjusting them. But that is a lot nicer. I need to put the end bit back in. Happy days. Remember, get someone to help you. Don't try wrestling it on your own, because that's quite heavy. Anyway, a few jobs done this episode. Not as full on as the last one. Engine swap, engine rebuild, engine in. That was full on. Next time, I want to focus on the wishbone bushes and the suspension. The suspension's quite bouncy over bumps, 
and well, the wishbone bushes are knocking all sorts. Um, yeah, not very nice. I've got new bushes, waiting to hear back about some suspension, so I want to fit a low mileage or new suspension, of course, and you obviously replace both sides. I want to get some lowering springs. We'll get on with that. We'll get it driving nice, then we'll focus on the front end, get the later front end, and then with regards to paint, I'm thinking half and half colour. A lot of T5 owners do it. I'm thinking that myself. What colour or what colour scheme would you guys go? I've got a Facebook page, DTE TV. If you want to show pictures of your camper, uh, same colour, top and bottom, or two different colours, join the Facebook group, upload a picture of your motor, let's have a little butcher's. Otherwise, what colours should we go with this? Full repaint, top half, bottom half, make it look pretty. The bodywork is pretty straight, so I haven't got to spend too much time repairing dents. There's a couple, but not as many as the caddy. Anyway, that's going to about do it for this episode. If you enjoyed the video, click the thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one. I'm out.